my name's Fred McNeil and you're watching QAC TV 7. Thanks for being with us. This is a delightful program we have called Discover Queen Anne's. Every couple of weeks we bring in uh, people who have lived in the community for a while and they share with us the wonderful history of Queen Anne's County. Today I have my golfing partner, my basketball partner in the stands watching all the Queen Anne's games, Hall of Fame coach, retired teacher, Mr. Charles Nesbitt. Charlie, thanks for being with us today. Thank you. Okay, Fred. Now, Charlie, how about we start out? Let's go way back. We'll turn the pages. Where were you born and when? Well, I was born in Ardell County okay. in North Carolina, which is a town of Statesville. All right. And that was in 1931. Okay, 1931. Right. And went through elementary. How, what was it like back in 1931 in Well, there uh, they had a dual system also. Okay. I first started in school. One teacher had... Uh, seven grades first second third one four, teacher fifth, has a, six now Charlie, seven. Let me make sure because a lot of people watching this program have no idea what a dual system is what, what explain what a dual system is well dual system was back when they had segregation and uh we only had uh three schools in our county down there okay and it was one of those was afro-american school so the African Americans went to one school, right, and the Caucasians to another. Absolutely. I mean, is anyone yeah. under forty years old is going to go? What? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's right. And uh, I went to high school. There was only one high school in the county, and it was called Morningside High School. And uh, I walked by five schools to get to Morningside. Mm. And that's because those other five uh, schools were for whites right, only, and white you had to go to the African-American right. high school. And uh, I started in the eighth grade there, and I stayed there till I graduated as a senior. Okay. I played basketball, football, baseball, basketball, and ran track. And track, four sports. Right. Ran you, did you compete against African-American schools or Caucasian? It or was only Afro-American schools. Okay, so it was really segregated. That's right. That, yeah. And they were spread it out. We would go to places like Gastonia, Hickory, Asheville. Uh, we'd go down in the east and play down there. Now how, we're talking driving a couple driving of hours? Driving a bus. Uh -huh. in the 19, and we had no school buses. We had to use charter buses. Okay, so you'd charter a bus, travel a couple right. hours, and that was simply because the African-Americans right. and the whites didn't compete. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, how about after high school? You went to Well, after high school, I got a football scholarship to North Carolina e and in Greensboro. What position, Charlie? Uh, so I uh, played football there for two years, and I messed up my ankle, okay. and my hands are all messed up. Mm -hmm. And the doctor says, if you want to live long, <laughs> you're going to have no, to get out. Football. Right. So I didn't play after that anymore. What, uh, Charlie, what positions? Uh, I played wide receiver. Oh, it okay. wasn't called tight end then. Okay. Uh, all right. Now that was the old, not much passing or a lot of passing? Well, it was a lot of passing. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. right. okay. Now, and, your, and these injuries were all from the game of football? Right. My fingers are going in all kinds of ways. Mm -hmm. Did you continue with basketball? Or oh, yeah. I oh. continued with the basketball and the track and field. At, at the college right. level? Well, I played in the intramural leagues okay. there. Oh, okay. Right. Now, Charlie, I think one of the best things, you were ROTC? Well, oh, uh, right. yeah, I went there for a while in ROTC and okay. went to summer camp, and then I, uh, senior year, I couldn't pass the uh, physical for the Air Force. Is that right? Okay. Right. okay. So they, I got drafted in the Army in 55, stayed in there three years, and came back out, and I went back to a and and took a couple of refresher courses in education and while I was there uh, the director of public relations called me and said look I got a job for you if you now want this it. This is from Queen, oh from a and or Queen Anne's yeah, County? from uh, Queen Anne's County. County. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, I set up an interview so I met at that time, it was Supervisor Jack Webb okay. and Larry Jones. All right. I met him in Washington, D.C. in train station. And this is 1950? 1959. 1959. The summer of 59. Eisenhower's president. Right. right. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. And you, let's, let's, let me jump back. I mean, the military career. Uh -huh. Officer? 
Well, no. Oh, okay. How much it you was have? Uh, that was in the uh, National Guard. Oh, National Guard. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. But after that, uh, I served my time in the National Guard. Okay. And then I got out of that. All right. Okay. And then you get this phone call. Right. So we're 1959. Where'd you meet him? At the at old Union Station? Yeah, so over you, in you Washington, D.C. You took a train. Downtown to around the circle. Sure, I know. Okay. Yeah. All right. And they interviewed me there. And when they finished, they said, well, you got the job. Can you be here August the 15th? Now, when was this? Was this In 1959. In 59. Uh -huh. Okay. All right. So I, came, I drove up and... Uh, had another girl that came up the same year with me. She was from A&T. Okay. And uh, we stopped in Washington, D.C. for the night that night, and then we drove over the next day to, to Queen Anne's County. Now, ha no, let's see, 59, there was one, was there a bridge? Help me with it. Bay Bridge yeah, or Ferry? Yeah, it okay. was a duel when okay. I okay. got here. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. all right, okay. So 1959, you and another young lady come to Queen Anne's County. How much were you offered and what position? Well... I made thirty nine three hundred and thirty nine dollars a month. <laughs> three hundred and thirty nine dollars a month. Right. Mm. And it was thirty nine hundred a year. Mm. Thirty nine. And I had to uh, take care of my car payments. I had to pay my rent and eat. Mm. Now, what was uh, Centerville like in nineteen fifty nine for a young African American teacher? Well, they had only one school. Okay. It was. Uh, Afro-American school called Kennard. Okay, and that's the Kennard where the Kennard building there that's located on Little Kidwell. Okay, all right. Now, what were you what were you asked to teach? Well, uh, when I first came in, uh, I taught general science okay. and biology and a couple of classes of physical education. Everybody didn't take physical education at that time. Okay. So I got on a couple of state committees and we worked and worked. So we got it up where everybody would have to have physical education okay. now, in the county. Now tell me, that, okay, now, what was the Kennard School like? Was it just high school or was it everything? Well, it started at seventh grade, oh, seventh, seventh grade. grade, seven through 12. Okay, all right, okay. And uh, at the end of the 12th grade, they would graduate. They'd have the separate graduations in the county. Okay, and just so the audience knows, in, in Queen Anne's County at that point, uh, there was Kennard High School for the African Americans, right. Centerville High School, yeah, Stevensville High School, right. Uh, I guess the Sutherland High, High school. school. Do I have them all? Okay. Right, they had a team. Okay, now and Kennard was for the African Americans, right, and the other schools were for the kids. Right. Okay. Now, how did the kids? So, if you lived at Lo all the way at the end of Ken Island and you were an African American, you were bused uh, to you. Yes. Okay. Uh, the one school for Afro-Americans came from the whole county, oh. Pondtown, Barkley, all over. Y Mill, okay. all over. in every community in Queen Anne's County. Right. How many kids about Charlie? Uh, we had graduating classes of about 49 okay, or so 50 fairly kids small. per fairly year. Small. Right. Now, uh, the interesting thing, uh, who, was, uh, who was the principal and who were some of the teachers' names you remember? Well, Mr. Larry Jones was the principal. The man interviewed you. Right. Okay. And uh, Ms. Hollis was there. That's Madeline Hollis, right. still in Centerville. And we still had another lady, Mrs. Dorothy Hardy. Okay. Right. And she has passed. Right. Uh, we had Leon Taylor, oh, Bob Pop, Taylor. Pop Taylor, okay. He was there. And we had a science teacher named Marcellus Miller. Okay. He came in from North Carolina okay. and he worked there. Right. Joy, just for the heck of it, what happened to the other young woman who came up from A&T? Well, she taught uh, home economics there. Okay. Right. And she only stayed about four years right. and then she went back to North Carolina. She went back to North Carolina. Right. Okay. Uh -huh. So uh, this was 1959. Uh, so from 59 to about 66? You taught at Kennard? Yes. Uh -huh. Okay, that's quite a bit. Right. Now, how about coaching? You used to tell me some great stories about the basketball. What were you coaching at Kennard? Well, you? at Kennard, when I came here, they only uh, had programs in basketball and a very little track. Okay. So I started a program in the fall. We played flag football. We would play Garnett. We would play... Moton out of Denton. Now these are other African-American schools. Right. Okay. And right. we would play Lockerman from 
Caroline County. Now this is flag football. Flag football. Okay. Now how about basketball? Same thing. Basketball. We went a little farther. We used to travel to Crisfield, mm -hmm. Salisbury, Cambridge, mm -hmm. uh, Lewis, Delaware. Now, how did you get to the games? Uh, back then, I had to drive my car you and get drive. another teacher with a car and another teacher in order to carry the kids. So and you would go to Crisfield, play a basketball game in your own car, right? And then. Uh, and you have to drive them home after the right. game. Right. After that, you have to bring them home. I go to Crisfield at night. Uh, after two years here, they start giving us a bus. Okay. So we could use the bus. Get back at 4.30 in the morning after you get all your kids delivered home. You actually take them to their houses. Right. Mm -hmm. And then get up and be at work at 7.35. Now, if you were, be, you were paid under $4,000 to teach, how much were you paid for coaching? Or were you paid? None. Nothing for coaching? I, I coached for 20 years without getting any without pay. Without a single penny. Right. Now, tell me, how about uh, some of the athletes? Uh, to start with, I mean, who were some of the great canard athletes you might have had? Well, we had, uh, in the baseball program, we had uh, a fellow named uh, Jimmy Mars. Uh, since then, he's passed. Uh, we had a boy named James Robinson. He was a heck of a pitcher. And then uh, on the track team, we had guys named Melvin Clark. Clayton Washington was a shot putter. John Wright played basketball and ran John track. Wright who just retired right. from the Board of Ed. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And his brother George. All right. And well, I could go on for go an hour. On on. Charlie, what was, uh, let, help me out. Uh, what was competition like in the 59, early 60s? Was the level of play good? Yes, okay. it was very good. Okay. But uh, in the state, we had a state tournament. Our tournament was held at Bowie College. Now, this was in Africa? afro America. So there was two state champions? Right. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. how, did we ever, how did we do in that? Uh, well, we were there every year, you just made, about. Yeah. After the playoffs. Right. Okay. Now, who else coached? You were the only coach? I was the only coach. I coached everything. And so fall, flag football, basketball, baseball, track and, field. and track and field. Right. We would run on Thursdays and play baseball on Fridays. <laughs> and probably the same kids, basically. Well, not all of them. Oh, no, no, no. 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 Okay. All right. Quite a few of them that didn't play. Did, was there a track at the Canard Building? Or where you well, play? no. We just had a field there. Okay. But I got in contact with uh, Mr. Calvin Wilma, which was a custodian at the school. Is this in Earl Wilmer's family? Right. Yeah, okay. They burned coal in their furnaces in the elementary school and the high school. Okay. So I asked him, could I have all the clinkers and the coal? All right. And I got out and made a track around the field out there. Are you actually made, and that's behind, with the no. baseball, oh, no, where was that? It's right there where the parking lot is now. Oh, where the parking lot is right. now. Right. Okay. That was our track and field. We had pole vaulting. We hmm. had uh, Which we high don't jumping. have now in our high school. Right. It kills me. Okay. And uh, broad jump, long jump, and we started triple jump. Triple jump was started uh, back in 62 or 63 okay. in right. the state. They used to call it the hop step and right. jump. Right. Mm -hmm. okay. Now, Charlie, just a little historical perspective. Were the facilities in the African-American schools as good as the uh, other schools? I mean, was textbooks same? I mean, was it fair? Well, uh, textbooks, when I first came, uh, we got the hand-me-downs. Okay. When the other schools in the county oh, uh, pass, them down. pass them down, and then we would get them. Okay, all right, all right. But uh, after that, after I stayed here for two years, we uh, really got our program up. We had uniforms for all uh, the activity teams that we had. Okay. And in 1964, uh, Chick Sakarin, which was at uh, Stevensville High School, we got together and says, look, let's scrimmage. Okay. And we start scrimmaging and in this basketball. This is the first time that's been done. Right. Yeah. It's never been done. Never been done. In the okay. county. All right. So Chick and I, he would come to my school one year and I'd go to his school one year. And then when Dr. Rhodes made the decision that he would build one high school in the county, then uh, that's when uh, we all got integrated. Talk about that, Charlie, because you have a lot of praise for Harry. What, how was that? So up till 1965, 66, we have separate high schools, Caucasian. Right. So what, 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 was, what was the process? Supreme Court decision or what? Yeah, that was a Supreme Court decision there 
which changed the school and education in America okay. at that time. And Dr. Rhodes said that, well, we're going to build one school in this county. And he came out and he talked to everybody, he told, explained the program. And this and, is Harry Rhodes, the superintendent right. of schools, right? And we haven't had another superintendent like Harry Rhodes since. <laughs> okay. And now, so it was, it was a very brave, I mean, this was the Brown versus Board of Education right. and the Supreme, Absolutely. the Supreme Court says, hey, look it, we don't believe in separating the races. We're going to, we, we have equal opportunity. Uh, right. did it, how did it go in Queen Anne's County? Was it smooth well, transition? Well, in or? Queen Anne's County, we had no problems. No problem uh, okay. Kids accepted other kids and everything. And we moved to the high school in 1967. Okay. And from there on. There have been no problems, now, anything. Wh what, ha you, what happened in the move? So we have uh, uh, Settlersville, Centerville, Stevensville, Kennard. Were the faculties all combined? And right, students yeah, they brought those faculties in and put them in their uh, teaching areas. Okay, and that, so, and that became Queen Anne's County, County High School. High school and, the other and no teacher lost their job so doing that process. Jobs. Okay, how about the coaching? Now, where did you, you went from... Uh, uh, flag football, basketball, track and field, and baseball. What happened when the schools merged? Well, when we, if I can go back no, just please, a little please. bit. Yeah, yeah. In 1965, the physical education teachers got together and said, let's run some of our programs together during this year. Okay. Uh, I mean, against each other. Oh, so we played basketball against Centerville, Sutlersville, and Ken Island. Oh, that was before we moved to the high school. Oh, we actually competed in the varsity level. How'd right. you do? We did very well. Okay. Oh, uh -huh. Okay. And after that, we ran track. Okay. So you competed with that for a year? Right. A year or two? Yeah, for one year. Two years. Okay. Uh -huh. So then when we moved in over there, we had a meeting, and they appointed uh, the various track coaches, uh, the basketball coach who's going to coach football and everything. So I took track and field. Okay, at that one high school. And that was the only program we had at that time. Okay. And, and during the next five years, I started cross country, cross country. in okay. the fall. All right. And then I got that one going. And then in 1979, I started indoor track. So you're doing cross country, indoor, indoor track, and outdoor, and outdoor track. track. Okay. And I did those while I was there at the high school. Okay, all right. Mm -hmm. Now, Charlie, how did you get, I, I don't know whether the, the audience knows that you were very involved with the uh, state, uh, I guess, officials for track and field and cross country. Right. How did you get involved in all that? Well, they had to have a representative from the county, and uh, I was nominated to be the rep representative for Queen Anne's County for the track and field, basketball, and uh, indoor track. Oh, so and you were cross country. For I all represented all okay. those areas for the county. Okay. okay. And uh, Chet Knight was the football coach. He represented them in football. Oh, okay. All right. So, yeah. And the basketball coach at that time was Glenn Vanoe. He was from Pennsylvania. All right. So he, since then he moved back to Pennsylvania and the system started getting new coaches every other year for a while. <laughs> okay, unfortunately, right, Charlie. Charlie, tell me about now. Let's, think of, let's go to cross country. Okay. A couple of names that pop in your mind. First of all, how many years were you the head cross country coach? Well, I crossed uh, coach cross country until 1994, uh, okay. 95, So you were talking 20-some years. Yeah. Anyway, who were right. some of the great names in cross country, boys and girls? Well, I uh, start out with boys, had a board named Raymond Perry, uh, Calvin Sewell, uh, Randolph Fidget, and he had a brother named Nathaniel Fidget. And then the girls, uh, we had Jenny Boone, okay. we had, uh, what was the other girl's Sharon name? Sharon Rochester you had, yeah. she did great. Sharon right? Rochester, okay. right. we had uh, Jenna, uh, young. Jenny Young. Oh, Gina. Oh, Gina, Gina Young, okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, were we, I mean, cross country were pretty competitive. Right. Yes? Yeah, I mean. And uh, in cross country, we won the first Bayside ever. Championship. Championship. Oh, right. The Queen first Anne's year day. that it started, okay. it was held at Chesapeake College. Okay. Uh -huh. Charlie, how about, okay, let's talk about indoor and outdoor track. I mean, right. like Richie Bowser. Give me some of the great names. Great high jumper, Richie. 
Uh, in indoor track, we had uh, quite a few in there. And matter of fact, we had about 23 kids or more. 23, okay. Right. That were what, champions? Right. 23 kids, oh wow. Right. So you're averaging one a year at least. Every year we kept that type of figure yeah, okay. for indoor track. And some of those we had, uh, Jenny Boone also ran indoor track. Okay, mile, two mile or something. Yeah, yeah. and uh, I had another little girl that her father worked at the Acme, uh, ran the Acme. Do you remember the name of him? Okay, ran the Acme. Uh-huh. Trying to do the Acme. Uh, the not, old Acme not here the, in Not Randolph Hollis's. No. No. no Who would that be? Ran the Acme. Uh, her name was, she's working in the Acme right now. You kid. Uh-huh. And she was a runner. Yeah. Oh, okay. She All was right. a runner. Okay. And you had what? You had a shot putter that was real good. Richie Bowser won Ricky the Ricky Bowser. Uh, had a kid named Wade Coleman. He Is ran. He the shot? Oh, he was a runner. She okay. was a shot putter. Okay. He shot put it indoor, outdoor. And after that, he went to the University of Delaware. He broke every record up there as a freshman in the mm. hammer and the mm. shot put. Hammer and the shot put. Right. Oh, wow. Okay, good. Charlie, how about... Uh, now, how you you still we have the Charlie Nesbitt relays. Tell everybody about that. Right, uh, Mrs. Pinkett was instrumental in getting oh, this. Oh, Florestine Pinkett, right. phys ed teacher, coach. Right. right. When I retired, she said, "Well, we're going to have a relay before you retire, and name it after you." And I said, "I don't do that." Okay. So she did it and got it started. And it's been going on now for about 20 years. It's in April. Do you, do you have this year's date? It's April the 12th. April the 12th. If you right. like track and field, that's a great event. That's the best yeah. track meet we have. Right. It will be held there. Okay. Now, Charlie, how about you have this other career that I like, you grade officials. Right. Fast, tell them about that. Well, uh, a few years ago, a guy from Denton, Charles Huff, asked me would I be interested in uh, observing officials for... Uh, McBoer, which is a junior college uh, basketball league. Okay, that's the Chesapeake right. College, Anne Arundel, uh, Anne Arundel right. College, uh, Cecil Community College, Howard okay. Community College, Southern Merrill, and all those. Okay. So I was doing them in Anne Arundel County, uh, Cecil County, and I couldn't keep up with all of them. So I told him, I said, look, Charles, I can only do Chesapeake. <laughs> it's close. <laughs> so it was close. So I've done Chesapeake for the last four or five years. Okay. Now, Charlie, there's a whole other side of you that people don't know. Uh, for years, you were a member of the Republican Central Committee. How about, uh, how many years were on the Republican oh, Central Committee? Oh, I served 16 years on that. 16 years, right. nonstop. Right. So here you are teaching, you're coaching, you're involved politically. I mean, you, you stay right. busy. And then also, I believe you're very big in the disabled veterans. Right, yeah, and I was an officer in there. Okay. And also the American Legion and the Veterans of Foreign War. Mm. So, Charlie, what do you do your off nights? <laughs> you uh, watch a little We ESPN. didn't have very many. <laughs> Charlie, uh, let me ask you. Uh, you were married, two wonderful sons, and you have a grandson, a grandchild now, right? right who's keeping you busy. Right. <laughs> okay. What, what's the biggest change, or what are some of the changes you've seen in Centerville, say, since 1959? Just... The community itself, the attitude, Any, anything that jump out at you? Well, the biggest thing, Fred, that jumps out at you, if you go uptown now in Centerville, you don't know anybody. <laughs> That's true. Okay. We have so many more people. When right. I came to Centerville you knew back everybody. in 59, there was only 900 people in Centerville. 900, okay. 900 people. Hmm. Made up the town of Centerville. So you just about could you you, you knew everybody. Yeah, you, between you and your wife, you taught them all basically, right. didn't you? Okay, yeah, absolutely. All right. So yeah. The, and I agree with you because I'm constantly amazed. I go to church now. I don't know half the people. I go to Acme. I don't know half. So it's, absolutely, and it's good for the town. But it's, if you've been around as long as you have, it's quite a change, isn't it? Absolutely. Okay. How about the growth? I mean, do you, does that bother you? Or no. Big deal uh, or? No, the growth doesn't bother me too much. Okay. We've had a lots of uh, development around Sympathy Village, North Brook, and uh, the new development over here on Kidwell. Right, okay. Yep. Oh, and you know, I also forgot, since we're talking about you were all, how long were you a member of the town of Center Luzoni Board? I forgot all about that. Uh, I served on that 16 years. Another 16 right. years. Uh -huh. So you had uh, the GOP Central Committee, 16 right. years, or 16 or 18 years. You had... Uh, uh, the town zoning committee. How was that? How was that? Was that a good experience? Yeah, yeah. town zoning committee. 
is very nice, and it was run well. Liz Raper's been on there ever since I can remember. Okay. So that was a good experience. Absolutely, okay. and Sterling Mock was on there when I served on there. Had Sir Jane Davison on there for a while. Okay, that's right. Mm -hmm. Now, Charlie, we've only got a couple minutes here left. Where'd you get such a good golf game? I want everyone to know, uh, Mr. Nesbitt, at his age, and we won't reveal his age, still plays outstanding golf, hits the ball a mile, has soft touch with a putter. Where'd you learn to be such a well, good golfer? Well, see, while I was in Greensboro in college, uh, we had to take golf and go through the teaching of golf and whatnot. So I played lots of golf in Greensboro and never picked up another club until after I retired. Okay, and now you're still playing and playing well. Well, still like to play, but I'm not that well. <laughs> you're being modest, you're, you're being very much. Well, Charlie, look, thank you very much. We're about to wrap it up. And I want everyone to know, uh, Mr. Nesbo is very humble. He's in the uh, Queen Anne's County High School Hall of Fame, and that's quite an honor. And you help with that committee still, right? Right, yes, I'm still working on the committee. Okay, and the wonderful cross-country coach. Matter of fact, the greatest thing is when you go with old Coach Nesbitt, anywhere you go, a golf course or a public meeting, there's all, people walking up to him, hey, Coach Nesbitt, how are you doing? So he's kind of like a walking legend here in Queen Anne's County. Well, Charlie, again, thank you for okay. visiting with me. All right. Thank you We've for having a, me. We have a basketball game tonight, and it's February 5th. We're not too far away from golf. All right. right. Okay. okay. Thanks again, Charlie. All right. Thank this you. This is Fred McNeil. You've been watching QAC TV 7, Discover Queen Anne's County. Thanks for being with us. Thank you for your time, and we'll see you next time.